Hey, yo, you're listening to Edge Coach Quip, featuring our very own edge coaches and community, dropping knowledge nuggets to fuel your day. Hello, and welcome to Coach Quip. I'm Coach Robin. I'm Coach Chris, and this is episode 101, and today we're talking about mental toughness. I feel like this is one of those topics that everyone can relate to. Every single person. And I think it's one that we've been asked to do probably consistently. Uh, I know as a coach, I get asked these questions all the time. And if I'm not asked these questions directly, the things that my athletes are saying to me gives me an indication that this is the conversation we need to have. So I'm very excited for this one. Uh, Let's kick it off with what is mental toughness? So mental toughness is a personality trait that determines a person's ability to perform consistently under stress, under pressure, and it's pretty closely related to concepts like grit and perseverance and character, and those are all terms that you've probably heard in conversations around mental toughness. I think it doesn't really matter what you call it. If you are an athlete, you need to have mental toughness to press on in tough situations. It's as simple as that. You know, as athletes, we train our bodies, but the good news is we can also train our minds. So today we're going to talk about some tips for mental toughness, which really you're going to get 11 total, but your first one is coming at you in this quick portion. So how to gain mental toughness? Practice suffering. You know me. I love suffering. <laughs> this, is so, this is so perfect that you're the person to talk about this in the intro here. I love suffering. I love elective suffering. I think it really fortifies us to just honestly deal with life and mm-hmm. all of the other BS that being an adult entails. <laughs> um, really, truly though, when it comes to trying to figure out how to be mentally tough in the conditions that you're going to be experiencing, especially when you're racing, Um, We want you to put yourself in those same conditions that test you because the more you're exposed to it, the more normal it becomes and the better you get at dealing with it. So, you know, saying, yeah, we're going to get in out of our comfort zone, out of that bubble and in that space, practice staying calm and relaxed. Ways that you can do this. Really hard training sessions. Not every single one. We'll get into that more in the bonus miles. Pick some unpleasant conditions, like this morning when I decided that 9 a.m. was a great time to go out in feels like 100 plus degree weather. It was terrible. Um, Even recovery modalities, like ice baths. I know Coach Dan with our tri club just did a breathing clinic and they submerged in an ice bath up to their neck and practiced some, some pretty skilled breathing in order to build up that skill. So vary your efforts, right? The other way that we can do this is If we are going to choose a hard effort, let that effort be actually hard. Not everyone should be a supper fest, right? But recovery is absolutely a huge component of practicing suffering because you keep the easy days easy, you can keep the hard days hard, and then guess what? You grow without breaking down. Yeah, and you know, to be to be an athlete who loves what they do, not every session needs to be that suffer fest, like you said. And there are people that go out there and think the way to improve is to hammer, hammer, hammer. And those are the people who inevitably burn out or are overtrained and under recovered, which we'll talk about in an upcoming episode. So yeah, it's make those hard efforts hard. Practice your suffering on those days, and then back off and, and recover as because fitness is only actualized through the recovery phase. There we go. (laughs) So mental toughness is something that helps people not only in sports, but obviously in life as well. High stress jobs, uh, you know, in family situations, uh, traveling, being around people for the holidays. Like these are all situations where mental toughness uh, and perseverance and grit can help you. And so we are hopeful that this episode will translate not only to your training and racing, but also into making you a better person as well. We've got 10 more tips for mental toughness coming up in our bonus miles, so stick around. All right, welcome back. We are talking about 10 tips for mental toughness, and we're gonna kick us off with number one, which is know your why. You know, I feel like we talk about this one a lot. We've done some past episodes about determining your why, but having a clear reason of why you're suffering is really important and can help you have mental toughness. It can help you continue on when things are tough. I know this is one that I tell my athletes to before races to figure out their why and, and to have that as a point that they can come back to, right? Their foundation, 
their, uh, their anchor, where if they start to feel a certain way, they start to suffer, that they can go back and say, why am I even doing this? Because we pay money for this, we are doing this electively, right? Um, your elective collective suffering. It's happening. Yep, and so it's important to know in those moments where it doesn't seem worth doing to go back to that original reason of why you're taking on this challenge in the first place. We have a couple of episodes that we've done in the past of Coach Cook. If you want to learn more about finding your why and the importance of having a big why, uh, one of those is an episode that I did, episode 41, which was simply called Your Goal. And then we have a community quip episode with Sam Schroff, uh, episode 67, which was about knowing your why. As you train and toe the line. For sure. All right, that's one. Two, pay attention to the stories you tell yourself. I am very, very hard on myself when, especially when I'm doing something hard that's out of my comfort zone, I will start to tell myself, wow, you are really melting up here, Robin, you know, get your shit together. Um, however, that's the opposite of what we should be doing. The stories that we tell ourselves should, in fact, boost our self-confidence and really kind of open yourself up to doing some epic things with your performance. So as I was suffering out on the 606 this morning, frying like a piece of bacon, um, instead of saying, I am really, I thought I was conditioned to heat, but I guess I'm not. What I should have been telling myself is, I can do hard things even when it's uncomfortable. Oh. And that would have been a pivotal moment that I'll remember when I go out tomorrow and it's even hotter. <laughs> <laughs> We also have a couple of um, prior episodes, both by Coach Becca, which you will not be surprised by because she's kind of the queen of mental toughness and, and just keeping your wits about yourself. Episode 7, The Stories You Tell Yourself, and episode 36, Be Your Own Best Friend. I think of all of our 10 tips, I love number two the most. The, you know, This is yeah. just such an important thing. Uh, a sports psychologist told me once, be careful what you say to yourself, you're always listening. And it, it was a really simple phrase, but it, it made me, and it's something that I go back to frequently, of uh, those moments where I start to have negative self-talk or start to think something but not say it out loud, you know, it's just buried behind other thoughts. When you can identify that and recognize it and shift that perspective to those more positive things, it can be a total game changer in terms of being able to persist in what you're doing. I am also not like a rainbows and butterflies person, generally speaking. I'm always going to be like realistic and assess, which is why I think my, my inner voice is maybe a little bit harsh for me. I would never talk to an athlete like that, right? But finding something that's motivating, finding the nugget in there is really the point of, of the positive self-talk. It doesn't mean positive, again, flower and rainbows. It needs to be positive as in it gives you a boost and you have power over what's happening. So number three is to frame your suffering. This is the one thing that we are all guaranteed. This, this should have been your tip, if we're being honest here. I mean, <laughs> I stole it. it from I you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but frame your suffering. Again, this goes back to knowing why you're out there. And then to frame it up in saying that there is power in doing hard things. You know, to your point, uh, in our last episode, talking about failing forward. So, you know, if we are able to frame up our suffering, and even if it doesn't have a successful, quote unquote, successful outcome in terms of time or distance or placement or results, that our attempts to do something and just experiencing that discomfort can really help us move forward and progress in our training and in life. I think a lot of times people freak out when it comes to suffering and things getting hard mentally because they are they're kind of avoiding that it's going to happen or they're living with this expectation that it's not but when we actually expect it to happen um then we expect it and we're not surprised by it which means we can just navigate it better mm -hmm. alexi pop has talked about um, when she was working with one of her coaches as an adult athlete about this coach talking about being patient with the pain and to kind of envision almost like a ball that you're running with and if it's a long race you know like a half or a full marathon like those are the distances that she was getting into at the time you know, knowing that you're going to have pain, it's going to come. It's just a matter of when, how long, and don't judge what someone next to you is doing because what you need to worry about is, oh, here's the pain we, we expected. It's here. I'm just going to troubleshoot and be comfortable with it. And if I'm running next to you, you might have already gone through your pain, right? Or maybe your pain hasn't happened yet. I think a lot of times we look around and we're like, oh my gosh, this person next to me looks so fresh and I feel terrible. But it's like, well, that might actually be 10 minutes after they were really suffering, right? So being patient with that pain, both in terms of how you 
expect it and treat it and also how you compare it to the next person. Right. Number four, focus on what feels good. We always become what we focus on, right? So if we take our conditions, our body parts, and we start to think about the things that feel good instead of the things that feel terrible, it starts to reframe what we have power over. Like, again, I'll go back to my hot ass run today. As I was running west, I was running on the sun. I also made the poor decision to wear black clothes and no hat, right? And I kept thinking to myself, Robin, Robin. As soon as I turned around, all of a sudden, even though it was sun in my face, my sunglasses did their job, I had air movement again, and I had a sunny side of the path. Everything shifted. The way back was exactly the same as the way out, but it felt like half the time, right? Because all of a sudden, I could focus on what feels good versus what isn't feeling good. Um, another great example is when we're in strength class, we're doing something like wall sits, right? That's a very static, isometric, terrible, mm -hmm. terrible exercise. A lot of times I'll have athletes wiggle their fingers or wiggle their toes, something that's not working a ton, just so that they can direct their energy to an area that just isn't totally being taxed. And then again, they can focus on that as opposed to how much their legs are burning. Yeah, this one is great. So focusing on what feels good in terms of like the physical sensations of what feels good, but also holistically, just generally speaking, we do become what we focus on, yeah. right? And so if we are focusing on positive thoughts, on affirmative uh, mantras and things like that, that's gonna shift that focus and attention away from what hurts to our own empowerment of being able to push, push through whatever it is that we're doing. Yep, I love that. All right, so tip number five is to keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate things. We can really, uh, when we are suffering, go down a, a rabbit hole of all of the bad things that might happen in the future. Uh, you're suffering at mile 10 and a half marathon and then your brain starts to go, okay, it's over, I'm never gonna hit my PR. How am I ever gonna get through the next 16 miles? Yeah. Exactly, so you know, don't let yourself go down that route. Just keep it simple and stay present. One way that we can do this is by developing a routine and having uh, something that we can do where we don't have to make as many choices in the moment. I always say, Race brain is not a, the brain you want to be thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that can even be- That's a do, not a think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Even in tough workouts, you don't want to be doing math while you're running a, a tough interval workout. It just doesn't work out. So having things, uh, systems set in place, and it's even about making those tough decisions that, okay, you're gonna get up at five in the morning because you need to beat the heat to go do that hard interval workout. Set your stuff out the night before, right? Like do as much advanced planning as you can to take the, the difficulties out of the morning so that you can get that workout done. Um, there are some other examples of ways that you can set up systems for yourself in order to make fewer decisions in the moment. And we've had a couple of past episodes about that. One that I did called Priming, which was episode 16. And then one that you did, Freedom and Discipline, episode 64. And both of those talk about setting up systems or ways to keep it simple so that you can push through in those moments that are tough. The fewer choices we have when things get hard, the better. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Every time. Yeah. And I mean, this is the reason why presidents wear the same outfit yes. every day. <laughs> like, like, your high level uh, tech people have a uniform that they wear so that you don't have to decide what to wear in the morning. And that sounds like such a silly thing, but it is. We, we, we become fatigued with the decisions yeah. that we make throughout the day. And we'll make barriers out of those decisions too. Absolutely. Hurdles, big hurdles, yeah. Yep. Take the hurdles down. All right, number six, develop a mantra. Uh, we love a good mantra here. Every year we have one that we release here at Edge. Um, this year's is the harder the climb, the better the view, which I think is just perfect coming out of the last three years. Mm -hmm. um, choose a phrase that resonates with you and your goals. I know that I take screenshots when I see some pop up and then I'll just be able to kind of go through those and see, you know, at a later time, which one really, you know, I want to pick. Um, it's even cooler if you can actually time it with your breathing or your footfall or your pedal stroke or your swim stroke. Um, we, of course, love fear less, break more. Um, a lot of times when you are developing those mantras and you're, and you're changing it out or like cadencing it out, you will have probably a slightly shorter amount of inhale than exhale. So sometimes it's four steps in, five steps out, but get 
you know, play around with it. You have options. And I think um, one of my favorites was a runner, Carly, that um, she said, um, like, inhale belief, exhale bullshit. And I, <laughs> I love that. You know, it's like just exhale all of the thoughts that you had why you can't do it and inhale everything of why you can't. Um, something that really resonates with your why to bring it back uh, is going to be really helpful in those yeah. hard moments. Absolutely. Um, there are a couple, of course, um, prior episodes that also go along with this, which again, not surprisingly, these are coming from Coach Becca. We're looking at episode 59, Breathing Mantras, that gives a lot of great guidance of how to time it up with your cadence, as well as episode 69, Positive Race Mantras. Um, really great to have one heading into a race. So, you know, you can practice that on your long stuff. All right, tip number seven, one of my personal favorites. I feel like I talk about this all the time. Avoid the comparison trap. Your comparison is my suffering. <laughs> I think you're right, I think you're right. That is true. Uh, this is the one that I always come back to you because it's something that I see so many people kind of fall victim to, and myself included. I mean, I think this is why it, it resonates so deeply with me. And you were talking about being patient with the pain and gave those references about uh, not knowing how someone is suffering next to you, right? And that comparison of being in the middle of a, of a race or an event and seeing somebody and going, oh, they look so strong right now. Why do I feel like trash? Or, you know, feeling, uh, being passed by somebody and, and saying that they're so much better or stronger than you are. That comparison does not help you stay tough. <laughs> that comparison is an out, right? It's one of those barriers that we put up to prevent ourselves from being great. Uh, and you know, I think largely this is because humans are designed, particularly in this world of all of our creature comforts, to not suffer, right? Yeah. We, we, we go out of our way to avoid suffering for the most part. So we really have to, when we're in those positions to suffer, it is, it's not our nature. Yeah. And we will so, always choose the easy route. All, almost yeah. always, right? <laughs> and the people who don't are special people. And so, you know, this is why we're having this episode to help you be able to sit in those moments of discomfort. Uh, comparing yourselves to other people is not a good way to stay tough. Uh, you need to be focusing on your why, your what, your present moment. And I think the cool thing about this is also that we know that conditions change. In, in, in every race, every event, every training session, uh, even sometimes within a moment, right? You might, in a, in a minute, you might feel great, awful, uncertain, super confident, and, you know, without what, anything else in between, right? Yeah. To be able to experience all of those feelings and emotions in a moment or in a race, uh, you know, that's part of the deal. That is part, nothing is, nothing is forever when you're in training and racing. So being accustomed to that and knowing that you can't worry about the person who's next to you. You have to run your own run your own race, so to speak, regardless of what the event is or what it is that you're trying to persist through. So the point here is just be careful about how much you are on social media, uh, any sort of platform that has those comparisons that you might fall victim to. If you notice that you're obsessing over other people's Instagram posts or Strava posts and segments, you know, maybe back off of that. Uh, focus a little bit more on what you are doing as opposed to comparing yourself to other people. We've done some episodes, not surprisingly, on this in the past. Uh, mine was the Comparison Trap, episode 45. And then Coach Becca, once again, with episode 50, You Are More Than. Those are both great ones to go back to to listen if you are feeling like you're stuck in that comparison trap. All right, number eight. We're getting there, people. Relax. Relax, chill out about how you feel when things are hard. Getting uncomfortable and being uncomfortable and sitting with it is a superpower, but we do not expect you as coaches, we do not expect you to be good at it right away. We want it to build over time. This is why with you know any of our programming, but especially with our group endurance programming, we always build things progressively, right? By the end, we have of our season, we have people doing continuous 5K effort, right? Mm -hmm. In the beginning, they're doing three minute chunks. At the end of training, they're doing an hour of straight tempo. In the beginning, they're five minute chunks. We just need to build upon it, right? So if you're looking at hard efforts and thinking, oh, I haven't done those in a while, I don't know if I could, start small, build it, 
we can always address any type of weakness by dancing on that line and, and exposing in gradual amounts. And that is how you develop a superpower. You're not just born with it or not. All right, so tip number nine is to manage your stress. And we are talking globally here, not just your training stress or your racing stress, but your life stress as well, because- Adulting is hard. Adulting is very hard. <laughs> Adulting is hard and there are so many factors that we have now that we didn't have when we were you know, young people under a parent or guardian roof, yep. having our meals provided and no bills to pay. As we have work stress, we have life stress, we have family stress. Um, if you have children, um, I don't for this reason. I can't handle more stress. <laughs> you know, there are so many factors for having true, that additional. Means you gotta balance it. You have to balance this. So everybody has this stress in your life know that your body doesn't know the difference. If you are having a really difficult time at work and you're working extra hours or you have a project that's really super stressful, you might feel that fatigue and that, um, you know, the, this almost symptoms of overtraining in some capacity trickle into your workouts. So if you're not feeling as fresh or as mentally sharp, you know, understand that every area of stress in your life has an impact on how you will perform in your training and racing. So, you know, back to your last point, manage your stress, but relax a little bit because that will help you with your mental toughness overall. All right, number 10, we've arrived. See the big picture, right? When we are suffering in our training or suffering in our racing, it is just one moment of a much larger, longer effort and things change. I always say my end goal is to be running when I'm 80. So if I have a bad training day or a bad race, it's like, but did I injure myself, right? Like, am I actually okay? Okay, well, big picture, Robin's still got many, many years of running. That's the big picture goal, right? This is just one thing of a much bigger picture. You can really alleviate the pressure to perform because I think we do put so much pressure on ourselves to have these standalone, like perfect A races, which just it's not realistic to have those all the time. Um, by you can actually spend time reflecting on how awesome you are and all the cool things you do outside of your sport. So, you know, how do you serve your family that you are really proud of? How are you good at your job? You know, how are you, you know, this type of a friend who shows up for someone when they're in a time of need? Um, what are your hobbies? Like, what are you naturally good at that's completely different from your sport? And that will show you that you're not just that one thing right? Which alleviates suffering when it occurs. All right, to recap, in the quip we gave you the first one, which was to practice suffering. We love having exposure to suffering in small incremental amounts in order to get used to it. And then in our bonus miles, we gave you 10 additional tips starting off with know your why. Next up, number two, pay attention to the stories you tell yourself. You're always listening. Tip number three, frame your suffering. Tip number four, focus on what feels good. Tip number five, keep it simple. Number six, develop a mantra. Bonus points if you time it to your cadence. Number seven, avoid the comparison trap. Log off if you need to. Number eight, relax. <laughs> no, number nine, manage your stress. And finally, number 10, Keep the big picture in mind, especially when things get tough. All right, so now you have 10 plus one tips to put into your tool belt as you go ahead on your training, your racing, and frankly, in your life. Till next time. Thanks for listening to Coach Quip, original music performed by Mend. Follow us online on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Edge Athlete Lounge. Our podcast lives in the blog section of our website. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast, and you can check out the show notes for additional ways to contact us. Ready, set, onward we go.